Yeah, gotta aim for the top like, hold up, yeah, I can never doubt myself, I know better, all of you critics be acting like you know better, blowing the smoke, but I know when it does settle, so I'm in my element, it's everything that this level to the game. What's happening, people? Welcome back to the Athletes Athletes podcast. Once again, it is me and Reed jumping on here today to discuss the topic of the NIL assist dashboard that NCAA.org is hosting. Um, and I believe this is this comes from the thought bubble from Open Doors. I think Open Doors was one of the first to have something similar to this where they were charting NIL deals, but it was mostly, it was definitely for like in-house and all the different athletes that they were representing. Um, but now the NCAA is going to be housing all of this data because of, as we've discussed, the house versus NCAA court case that once completely settled. And I haven't seen that it's, it's been completely settled yet, even though I figured that it would be. Um, haven't seen it's completely settled as of yet. Well, once that takes over in 2025, 2026, there'll be a lot more data on this dashboard. Um, if you're listening to this, you're going to probably miss some of the different screenshots and things that we have up while we're speaking. If you're watching this, you'll get a chance to see some of these different numbers that they currently have on this dashboard. And in this dashboard, and, and we were talking about it before we jumped on, it's very bare bones right now. Um, you're you're able to toggle between sports, between positions, between a lot of different segments on this dashboard right now. But there's also a disclosure of all the reporting that is in this dashboard is self-reporting from the 2023-2024 season. So not a lot of athletes probably disclosed the NIL deals and the NIL money that they have made, or at least that they made during that 2023, 2024 season. Um, my initial thoughts is that this dashboard is going to be awesome. It's going to be a gift and a curse. It's going to be great, but it's going to be terrible because once this, and, and it's obviously public domain right now, if we are looking at it, it's complete public domain because we don't have some sort of secret NTA log login to, to see any of these numbers. But once the, reporting becomes mandatory for these power four. We're not even going to say power five anymore. Power four schools who opt into the rev share. And then they start to fall under the roster caps, which we discussed in, in, in previous episodes of this podcast, these numbers are going to go crazy. Um, but my initial thoughts about this dashboard is I love the fact that we're able to see the kind of money and the kind of deals that are being made. But I also don't want people to know. And I don't want specifically the NCAA to get hold of things like this and see what's happening either. But with the way that things have now transpired with these court cases, and how the money is now going to be distributed and it's going from the um, collectives to now, or at least in the future, going to be the in-house type of payments with the rev share. They're going to have to collect all of this data so that they know what kind of money is being made by all of these different athletes. So it's a very interesting set of numbers and, you know, just on the data dashboard, but also within here is service providers. There's an education tab. There's a membership tab to do all the reporting. So there's multiple segments that are on this website, but we are going to focus on the data dashboard for the most part throughout this conversation. Um, but Reed, what are your thoughts initially on this data dashboard, and you were actually the one that that found this. I didn't. I, I didn't even know that this existed, but you had sent it and said this looks really, really interesting. Probably something that we should dig into. So when you find out about this and you see this, what are your initial thoughts? Yeah, it's funny, like you say, Ryan. You know, it, it kind of 
it sort of came out of nowhere. There, I didn't really see a lot of a lot of talk about it. I didn't really see a lot of media about it. Maybe I'm just in the wrong circles, but I feel like you and I, you know, spend some time in here. Yeah. But you know, we were really we were actually looking up information on the settlement agreements themselves. We were trying to better understand kind of what the key takeaways were. And all of a sudden on the NCAA page, there was just sort of one of the articles in there was, you know, NCAA launches NIL assist dashboard. Started clicking around to your point, was honestly surprised I could even get in there. I was surprised it was it was public domain and, and open to anybody. But it looks like Teamworks um, and their sort of NIL subsidiary influencer have kind of partnered with the NCAA to try and bring some of this data to the forefront. And to your point, I think for me, you know, the more I look at it and the more that we both seem to look at it, it feels like this really interesting double-edged sword, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, on the surface, they're, they they do seem to be really providing some things that we've all kind of complained about, right? There's an education portal on there that talks a lot about managing finances, managing taxes, understanding deals, understanding how to protect yourself in these types of contract negotiations. Um, there are, you know, templatized contracts that you can find in there that you can use and sort of be on the, the front end of as opposed to trying to sign some random company's PDF file that they send you and, and things like that. Um, the idea of the data dashboard and the ability to be able to see all this aggregated NIL data um, is great. Um, they have a service provider log that they that they want people to to register within so that you can be rated and you can be ranked and you can have, you know, you can sort of let that review process and your peers allow for you to either rise or fall based on how you treat people. All these things are things that we've talked about and things that we've we've really wanted. And like you said, today we're going to focus mainly on the data dashboard just because it's fun to get in the numbers and kind of kind of dive in there. But it's this it's this strange double edged sword. Where I feel like you and I both kind of said this in our first conversation of like, I like that all of this is now starting to exist because I do think there's a need for it and a space for it. I wish the NCAA weren't the ones doing it because I feel like every time that they do anything, they're always I don't know. It feels like there's like an angle to it, an edge to it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's an idea of them trying to sort of control it, uh, rather than maybe a third party being being the ones kind of running it. So, I'm 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 optimistic, but I'm cautiously optimistic. I think is how I feel about it. I love what I see. I love the fact that these are things that are going to hopefully start to build in. But the other thing that you and I noticed was that so much of this is currently opt-in data. There's nothing that requires you to put it in. And I know you'll talk here in just a second about how the settlement might change that. But right now it's it's really, you know, you have to opt into these things. It's not like you're required to put your service industry in here to be able to work with students. It's not like you're required to pass some sort of financial literacy exam before you can start engaging in NIL, you know, for tax purposes or income purposes or whatever. And so I wonder how it's going to grow and develop. And maybe they did do this sort of on a soft launch scale. Maybe they did do this kind of under the radar to get that feedback from folks and to kind of see who who engages with what and how, and then they can make adjustments from there. But, you know, kind of curious, curious what your thoughts on there. And then obviously want to kind of lead back into how that settlement might change these voluntary opt-ins to not so voluntary opt-ins on, on disclosures. Yeah, I... Before I even t like touch on that, my my like I said, my initial thought was just like yours, double edged sword. But I also feel like, and this is the, something that I think we talked about during our our prep call for for today's conversation is the structure that everybody has wanted around nil is now coming because when it happened, one no one was ready for nil. Not one iota was anybody ready for it, including the NCAA. And then call what it is, maybe that was a little bit on purpose, right? Where they wanted a little bit of that chaos to say, okay, we have to figure out through trial and error um, how things are going to run, how we're going to police this, what sort of structure needs to be put around NIL because you had your huge deals where you started seeing kids getting cars, you started seeing kids getting different endorsement deals and signing, you know, Paige Beckers signed with Gatorade. And, you know, now she's going to have her own Nike PE, her own shoe this year as a college athlete. So 
a lot of those things were, were taking place and in, in those are taking place closer to, to now with, with Paige getting her own shoe. But initially there was a lot of things that were happening that were just like, Whoa, this person is now getting paid this amount of money. And this person's getting paid this amount of money. And you also had within that the NIL violations that you didn't, you didn't know when you broke an NIL rule because there weren't really that many rules initially. And now the structure is coming in where at least right now, as we said, they're self-reporting. And then at a certain point, it's not going to be self-reporting. And that's where the house case changes things. So to, to move on to, to that, when these schools start to opt in to rev share, the voluntary reporting of these numbers becomes mandatory because the NCAA essentially wants to know how much money is being spent by these schools, how much money is being made by these schools as well, because the rev share is coming from TV deals for the most part. It's coming from the sponsors that are going to be having you know, any of their vendors at games or doing any of those different sponsorship deals, but mostly it's going to be coming from the TV deal, um, TV deals as somebody who's, you know, like I said, a number of times on this podcast, a Florida state fan, I'm paying very close attention to that FSU Clemson, uh, court case against the NCAA where the grant of rights and the TV deals are on the forefront. But with, Opting into rev share is where you get the roster caps that we've spoken about in, on, on the past episodes, but then you also have to start reporting and saying, okay, Shadur Sanders, if you're Colorado, Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter have an NIL deal and they're making this amount of money and this is what they are making. And I honest, and, and it's going to be coming through the school as well. So as much as we think, that it's going to be the athletes reporting on their own NIL deals. It's not, it's not going to be the athletes. We know this, you know, we know that, you know, Shader Sanders is not going to sit down at, on his computer and he's going to type in who he has his NIL deal with, because now when at least let me, let me kind of jump back. NIL deals still have to, even though they're being signed through collectives, they still have to go to the NCAA even before this case even came about still had to go to the NCAA for them to approve them, to make sure that everything was essentially on the up and up and that nothing illegal in air quotes was going on. The thing that's going to change about that is it's going to have to go to the NCAA and, and to the school, not the collectives. The school is now going to be a part of the NIL deals that are getting signed. So when that happens, the school will most likely this is just my thought of how the process could potentially work is a kid gets approached for an NIL deal. Maybe they have to go to the, maybe they can go to the agent. Maybe they can go to the kid. Maybe they can go to the school, but there's going to be a number of different ways that they can go to the kid to get the kid to sign. Say it's Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter gets approached by Nike. Nike wants Travis Hunter to, be one of their brand ambassadors, signs them to an NIL deal. They reach out to Travis Hunter's manager or, or his agent. The agent says, okay, this is what the deal is. They now work with the school. The school will probably be the ones to file everything on behalf of the kid to the NCAA. Once everything is signed off on, it goes into the dashboard. And the money that is made will then be reported at the end of the deal being done is what I believe will happen. That's just my thought of how the process will work and how we'll get these numbers. As I said at the beginning, these numbers are bare bones right now. And you're able to toggle through from sport to position to a lot of different things. When you toggle to football and you have every single position in football, at least that they have on this dashboard checked, the number is, I think, what is it, around 60K or something like that, I think is what it was. Um, I think that's what it was. I'm trying to toggle right now as, as I'm talking to kind of figure that out. Um, 
but I, I think I think it was around 60k. No, excuse me, it's around 40k. So 39, 944. But if you toggle to quarterback only, which it'll it allows you to do in here. So if you you scroll down a little bit and you click quarterback only, it jumps to 91,993, $91,000. So about a nine, $92,000 is what quarterbacks in the NCAA have reported, self-reported from last year's uh, last year's season. These numbers are going to skyrocket whenever rev share comes in play and all the reporting happens. They are going to absolutely skyrocket. And that is, I mean, obviously it's just my opinion, but once they have to report these deals of what they're making, and I'm guessing that if they do a deal with a car dealership to get a car, the monetary value of that car will have to be reported because that's the only way that you can keep track of those as well. So that case is going to change a lot of things. You're going to see a lot of these numbers get as probably as inflated as we think they are. But if you truly toggle through them, you'll realize that the numbers aren't very big. And also the disclosure for this, uh, at least for, for anybody that is self-reporting right now, it says the median disclosure value is $500. In the future, it'll be $600 will be the median that the disclosure. So anything over 600, they will have to report. Right now, a lot of these are, are not over 600. A lot of them are way lower than 600. But when you go by position, you see how valuable certain positions are, as we all know. I mean, there's, there's, there's the Tom Brady's of the world. There's, there's, you know, the, the, the quarterbacks are going to be making the most amount of money. That's kind of the, the way it goes when it comes to football. So I thought it was most interesting of who has, you know, how much has already been self-reported, but how bare bones it is right now and how that's going to change when that court case comes into play. And we're now looking at potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars that are being thrown around. And mind you, there's some sports that aren't in here. You know, as somebody that covers wrestling, wrestling I didn't see was even in here as a as a sport that you can toggle to. So right now we don't even know what those numbers are, but at some point we will see those things and it won't be rumor anymore of this recruit or this transfer is getting a 500k deal to go to Iowa, which is a tweet that I literally read this morning. Um for somebody transferring from one school to to go to Iowa potentially. So these numbers, while they are fascinating to look at, and it's awesome to have this data, I believe this is just the tip of the iceberg. And so much will change once that court case is finalized and approved and things really, truly skyrocket. Yeah. And I, I mean, I agree. And, and, you know, you and me are both kind of putzing around in here. And I feel like every time I click in, I learn something new about Mm -hmm. something and i will say i mean the ability to segment whether it be by position i mean i was able to segment you know football quarterback fbs autonomy power four like i i could go right to that but what you and me looked at as well i mean right now they're just working with they're working with opt-in data someone had to go in go through the effort of putting this information in you know i assume they're pulling these just from influencer because that seems to be who the ncaa paired with at this point so i'm assuming that's where the vast majority of this data is so you're working with athletes that are only on that platform at least right now till they start to to add more people so to your point i think it's you know it'll be interesting once we start to get more and more players in here on how this sort of levels out because even when you look at fbs so i've got fbs power four i've got quarterback on here and when you look at the breakdown of these deals you can also see the percentage of deals per their disclosure value range so for example you know, over 60% of the values that are being reported, the deals that are being reported for that level, which we all can probably assume is probably sort of the tip of the spear, if you will, on on his, on numbers, mm -hmm. over 60% of those deals are $5,000 or less. And so what you have here probably is these, you know, massively outlier deals that are sort of skewing some of these numbers, and we don't have enough kids in the system yet to really get a good idea of what that looks like. Another example of that is, if I do power four quarterback, the average total athlete earnings right now is listed at $151,000. The median total earnings is $2,800. Mm -hmm. 
those two numbers don't make sense together when it comes to this. And so exactly to your point, I mean, we, we need, the reality is we need more data and we need, we need, we really need it to not be an opt-in type thing. It needs to be to your point. And I think that's what the NCAA is going for. And I think you and I both saw that on the settlement papers of like the NCAA, even when they're getting crushed, they're still, they, they still be scheming. Right. Mm-hmm. Like they knew, you know, they they got that they got that bit, that four billion dollar deal down to two point eight or whatever it was. They're trying to bring in the FCS people, or whatever else. But they added in that little piece on the bottom there. Hey, as part of this settlement, everything over six hundred dollars needs to get reported so that we can make sure we have a good handle on NIL. And then what happens there is your boy Charlie Baker and all of his wonderful political backgrounds <laughs> goes to Capitol Hill and says, hey. I need y'all's help getting a federal bill done that supersedes all these state legislations that are crushing us. And we need to figure out a way. Look what we've done. We've created this dashboard. We have this process set into place. We're going to make this thing universal. We're going to make it better for the kids. Here's all the things that we've identified that are wrong over the past two or three years. We've partnered with these other brands that specialize in these in these spaces. Invesco for, for education, Teamworks for reporting and data driving, all this kind of stuff. Let us take this back in house and manage this so we can understand what's going on. And that's where we feel that that double edged sword element. But I I mean, I agree. I think, you know, having that data and, and having these kids go and submit these things, I agree with you. A lot of these high flying kids are are probably not even gonna want to do it. They're probably gonna want to keep it under wraps and kind of manage their own deals or try to do that, which that'll now go the way of the dinosaur in the same way that at the professional level, you have to disclose your deals to the media and, and they have to know what the terms are and things like that, that people can they can then use for leverage. But I think schools are going to want to market it as well. I mean, my alma mater, like I promise you, if Texas bags a Lamborghini deal and gets this for the offensive line and whatever else, like they'll be, they'll be pulling up this chart themselves on the disclosure thing during junior oh, yeah. day and being like, look at this. Look at the average intake for Texas. Look at it for the national. Th- I mean, people are going to learn how to, to leverage that data. And I think that's where you're going to get the buy-in is you're going to have schools that realize, oh, we can we can utilize this. Um, mm-hmm. But man, for the extension, they have tra- they have a transaction type, right? So they, they break down, is it a royalty? Is it a social media deal? Is it a, you know, is it a, is it a property? Things like that. So to your point, being able to see those different values and the breakdown there, you know, some schools may say, hey, we may not have a lot of monetary value, but or be able to provide you with a lot of monetary value deals. I think of like the University of Utah as an example. Like every scholarship kid on the football team gets a truck. Now they lease it. So they're not, you know, they're, they found ways to kind of get around some of that tax implication and things like that. And they use it as more of a retainment strategy, if you will, because if you leave, you lose the truck. But that's something that you can market in there and you can say, hey, listen, you know, you're your tax implication isn't high. We don't give you a lot of like big monetary deals. However, look at all this stuff that we can give yeah. you that you're not going to have to pay for, but look at us compared to the national average and things like that. So, you know, if, if programs are smart, they'll they'll leverage those things and they'll use those things and they'll identify those things. You know, and then for me, just kind of as an aside, as a, you know, on the admission side, on the counseling side with our kids or consulting side with our kids, like, I like that I can go here and I can give kids a reality check, right? If I have a kid that yeah. comes in who's a men's rower and he's like, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to make a um, thousand dollars and do this or whatever. I'm like, all right, well, let's look at the data. Let's see what you can really, you know, hopefully expect. And I think I looked it up just a minute ago and it was like 53 bucks is like the yeah. average deal for somebody who's doing <laughs> men's rower. So you're like, that's great. Like if you want to go to one of these big division three schools and pay that private school tag or whatever, like, yeah, you can get Jimmy John's every so often, but like, let's focus on getting the grades up and, and getting as much merit aid as we can. Cause I don't think this is going to do it necessarily. So yeah. it's, I don't, there's just, it's such a powerful tool that every layer of the athletics department can use. Coaches can use it. Staff can use it. Director of operations can use it. Athletic directors can use it. I mean, it just, I can see why you would get buy-in from the schools and the other areas w- when it comes to, you know, the, the sales, the sellability of that. Yeah. I think you're right about it becoming a recruiting tool at some point, right? They're going to coaches and director of ops are going to say, let's put together a data sheet that showcases the money that showcases what we're doing for our athletes, what the placement is, right? Like that's going to be huge. You know, that's going to be a huge selling point to say, Okay, well, we know 
we know that what other schools you're looking at, right? Like a kid comes on a visit and kids nowadays are putting out graphics of here's my top five schools. These are, these are the schools I got offers from, you know, so blessed and humbled to get an offer from Georgia and, and Tennessee and Kentucky and, and you name it right now. And obviously coaches are paying attention to social media. They're like, okay, these are his top five schools. Let's do a comparison sheet, show him what people here in his uh, position group are making, what the potential is for them, and compare it to each one of these schools. And they'll be, they'll probably start sending that stuff to kids, right? Like that'll be in their, in their packages. Here's, here's the NIL incentive for these kids now, right? You're getting a, and I've had the the chance to, to help out a school. Um, I won't say the school, but they've, they've asked me to, you know, help write letters for, for their kids, or at least like proofread a letter to a kid that's being offered or a kid that signs. And it's just like a welcome, welcome letter. And I've seen these packages that have gone out to these kids with the welcome letter, with the stickers, with the, the shiny brochure and everything else that they get in these packages will now be an NIL brochure or package type of type type of sheet. I believe that'll be in there, right? Like, because if they're going to truly utilize this data, if they're going to have it at their fingertips, they're going to try to make it as transparent as possible. If you come here, you can make this. If you do like it's, it's now down to a job offer instead of requiring, recruiting truly this is what the offer will look like if you come here like we can do this with scholarship we can do this with nil we can do this with the education so you know not every kid is gonna want to go off to the nfl we can place you here right there's so many different avenues now that with this data they can go down and as you said toggling between all of these things you can go straight to see what the power four quarterbacks are making. You can go straight to see what the the centers, the the guards, the tackles, the wide receivers, every single one of them are making. And I know we're we're harping on football, but football is the the main thing. They're the penultimate right now. You know, basketball with March Madness, that's going to be the biggest game changer for them because when March Madness comes on and they need to promote March Madness and the marketing of it. You know, they always have those those video montages of, you know, an athlete uh, dribbling a basketball or standing in front of the, the light, the light board and all this other stuff. Now, these athletes are going to be like, OK, you want me to be featured in your March Madness commercial? Where's the contract? And that's going to start happening as well. So for on the basketball side of things, that's what's going to start happening. And if you look at these shows like college game day college game day is changing their intro this year and there's a new song there's new there's new video there's new players that are being showcased in the video i don't know if there were deals that were struck for the players that they're highlighting in there but i don't think that there was mostly because that footage was signed off on well before rev share. So they own all of that footage prior to, and that's not something they have to go back and pay for. So, but things like that, where it's the, the marketing, the, the show highlights that they're showing uh, the show intro highlights that they're showing, you know, not so much the ESPN highlights, but the ones where they're using, you know, the name image and likeness of Quinn Ewers to, advertise for the national championship should they make it right like if if beck if georgia and beck make it to the national championship this year i guarantee you you say you see beck on tv everywhere right and he's going to be doing a photo shoot here a video shoot here those are the things that are going to start being disclosed in here and i'm and i'm wondering how 
granular it's going to be if they realize, okay, these are the TV deals and here's the TV programs that are now paying the, the quarterbacks and the wide receivers or the, you know, the point guard or, or whatever else, or, or paying the Livy Duns of the world or the Caitlin Clarks of the world. I should say the, the, the Juju's of the world. Cause that's, who's going to be the one, the next coming and the page Beckers when it comes to women's basketball, those are the ones they're going to be focusing on. So I wonder as granular as this is now, if they take it steps further, once they start getting more data, here's what the TV deals are that are coming in. Here's what the social media deals that are coming in. And, and it's down to corporation where you can see a direct correlation between Libby Dunn and um, what's, what's one of her, I can't even remember what one of her sponsors is right now, but she's in the, what is it? Viore commercial. Viore would be a, yeah. Yeah, probably the big one. So like, and and you know there are there are companies like Core, um, who I've worked with in the past. Core does this where they can see the absolute value of all of these athletes from a social media standpoint. So, digging into the data that Core does might be something down the line that the NCAA might want to dig into as well and say, okay, now we have NIL, but what's their value, right? And that might be something that they want to start digging into. So. That's what I'm thinking of next steps when it comes to a lot of this data. Oh, excuse me. Sneezing. Um, yeah. It, it, so, yeah. It's so interesting to me. I feel like, you know, one of the things that I'm noticing the more I look at this in all honesty, and I honestly just noticed this whenever we were talking, you look at this dashboard as a whole, like the homepage, like the boxes don't even line up. Mm -mm. Like it, it looks like an intern built this, in a couple of months and it it makes me you know if i were to put on my tinfoil hat for here for a second it almost feels like they threw it up real quick they pulled the data that they needed to pull from teamwork and they're sort of using it as almost like a a slide deck to yep. pitch to somebody in congress potentially or pitch to other companies to say hey you can get on now early with us and be a part of this as we build it or you can be on the back end and have to pay fees or whatever it is but i mean it 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 but there being no media around it for it looking like i mean i built it on squarespace in 30 minutes <laughs> for you know it's the only thing in, it's still in beta right now uh yeah i mean it really did it, it does it feels like we all accidentally got public access to a beta that they were planning on sharing with other people and the only thing that like really seems to be truly truly fleshed out in this whole thing is that data dashboard. And I wonder if that is, you know, if I wonder if they understand that's a really big selling point of what people would want to have out of this, because I mean, let's be honest, like I'd love to not be cynical about it, but the powers that be and the people that would really want to, you know, be a part of this and, and invest time, money, resources in this are the ones that want to pull that data that, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's schools being able to pull it, programs being able to pull it, um, companies and businesses being able to pull it. I mean, you name, you know, people will, will benefit across the board from the data. The student athlete disclosures, yeah, I mean, that's great. We need that. Like, we're going to put that on their service providers. Hey, it's a way for us to get a giant registry and log of all the people that are involved in this space. That benefits people, right? Membership institution disclosures, same exact thing. The education component kind of feels like, you know, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, there's five different blocks on this thing. Two of them I see is truly being, one of them I see is truly being like for the kids, which is the education one. Yep. And that is the least fleshed out part of this whole thing. It's like a series of YouTube videos with no tagging and no categorization. There's no like core structure to it. I mean, yeah, they have, they have stuff on there, but it's nothing. I mean, it feels like they went to YouTube, typed in NIL help and just like downloaded the first 10, 15 videos they saw. But that damn dashboard, I can look up, to your point, I can look up, you know, a Western rider equestrian in Division One and get you all the data that you need from there. So it just, it's weird right now. It's weird to me. I, I'm, I'm fascinated by it, but I'm also like cynically suspicious of it as well, the more that I look at it. it it's almost, and I, I believe you're, you're, you're on track with they put it together one and it's definitely still in its in its beta form right now but they put it together to say look we're we're putting up guardrails look we're we're doing we're doing the thing 
right? You wanted, you didn't want the wild west of NIL anymore where, you know, the envelope was being handed across the table instead of underneath. You didn't want that. So now we're starting to put up guardrails. Here's one of the guardrails. Here's so you can track the data, right? And the funny thing for, in my mind is you see schools like Texas A&M who before the house case was decided getting rid of just like wholesale blowout of, of getting rid of employees in their sports department. And now it's like, okay, but when things need to be disclosed, who's left to disclose it? Because you're not, you know, like I said, you're not going to put this on the kids. It's, it's not going to happen. You know, it, it really isn't. There's let's, let's call it what it is. And I hate to say it this way, but a lot of the, a lot of the fans are like, you know, that kid's not going to class. You know what I mean? Like you, 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 you look at the, I think it was, I think I was in high school and Matt Leinert's, uh, one of his classes was like BCR programming when they were in the national championship. So like if, if putting classes on them, and I understand like it's a different day and age, but a lot of people don't think that these students are going to class. So that's why I'm thinking they probably aren't doing their own um, reporting on a lot of this stuff. So if you're trying to save money to pay these kids by getting rid of a number of employees to reallocate the employee salaries to player salaries, who's going to be left to do the reporting? Who's going to be left to install these guardrails that come down from the NCAA if people are no longer left and you're worried about paying the athletes? So something's going to have to, there's going to have to, they're going to have to find a balance somewhere because you can't have 30,000 coaches and, and, and 105 football players. And, and like I said, a number of analyst jobs now on the football team or a number of analyst jobs now for the basketball team. And, and I don't know, what is it? 35. I can't remember what, what the number is for basketball now, but the, when the roster cap happens, you can't have all these players that you're able to pay full scholarship plus NIL deals and all these coaches that can now be analysts, but can also coach and, and make money, but not have people to do the administrative work. So something's going to have to shift. You're going to have to have some sort of balance here when it comes to doing the reporting. But like I said, I, I love the dashboard, but I also hate the dashboard. I, I love that we can have the data. We can be super granular on all of these things. We can truly figure out where the money is going and you know follow the money, as they say, and see who's being paid and how much they're being paid and what kind of deals are out there. Because when you have more, when you have more data, you can make more informed decisions, which I think is great. But you also can bombard and overwhelm a community with too much data and it's it becomes an analysis a paralysis by analysis sort of a situation so while i love the fact that we have it and there's an education portion of this entire website and which i hope gets fleshed out even more which i hope you know they add on a lot more to and they make these courses mandatory Honestly, I would love for them to to make these courses mandatory because you know that the financial literacy isn't isn't there for these athletes and these players as of yet. So I'm hopeful that within the dashboard and within the education portion, more education courses come into play on these campuses, not just on this dashboard, but also that they do what's right when it comes to the data, they do what's right with putting up guardrails, putting up more educational things, and they truly flesh this out and do their due, dil their due diligence and not just say, hey, look at what we have. So now we can have some sort of government uh, write off or, or loophole or, or something that comes from the government that allows these guardrails to just literally be for show so that they can say, okay, look, they did their work. Let's give them some some leeway in in form of, you know, uh, some antitrust exclusion that I know they're going to be seeking in the future once this house case is it's closed. Um, but Reed, what are what are your your final thoughts as we wrap this one up? Yeah, I just hope that, you know, 
truly at the end of the day, I really do hope that this actually ends up working. I think it is really where I ultimately land on it. And my hope is that as it grows and as they flesh it out and as you say, the NCAA or whoever the powers that be inevitably get these these loopholes that they want to get, that they at least walk the walk on the other side of it and give kids the support structure that they need on this to feel comfortable not being taken advantage of in contracts, not getting out of their skis on tax liability, truly understanding what that landscape is or having access to understand it. Um, what, bat, what continues to baffle me are things like, you know, we still require you know, the 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 binge drinking, you know, four hour seminar that all college kids have to make. Not to say that's a bad thing, but it's reported now that under 30% of kids even report wanting to binge drink, much less binge drink in college, whereas over 65% of kids will have a non-student loan related debt in their lifetime. Yeah. So like, if we're going to meet these kids where they are and what the new challenges are for today with let's meet them where they are and let's provide those, those different support structures. And so I think ultimately my thought is I, I, on a whole level, I am for this. I think that it's good that this exists. I think there does need to be one sort of source of truth when this stuff happens. I'm suspicious of the NCAA taking ownership in anything anymore because they've kind of proven to me over and over again that they think about themselves and then the kids, the ones that actually build the association happen to be an afterthought. But, you know, with this amount of smoke that they have on this right on them right now, my hope is that they'll walk the walk on the other side of it and at least provide the necessary resources and necessary support structures to offset whatever hidden value they're going to get out of being able to, to, you know, use this information or protect themselves from future litigation or whatever it is that's coming out on the other side that I don't quite see just yet. Yeah, I agree. Couldn't have said it better myself. And with that, we will close out this episode of the Athletes Athletes podcast. As always, stay tuned for more topics like this one and the ones we've had in the past. But that is it for today. So keep it locked right here for more of your information on basically anything college athlete worthy. And we'll see you again next time.